In this video, I'm going to break down the difference in creative approaches and benefits of composing using a door versus a doorless setup, and we'll be analyzing this primarily through the lens of creative limitations. So I came across a post in the doorless subreddit which got me thinking. The post, which I'm paraphrasing for grammar, asked the question, which is more conducive to creativity, door or doorless? Uh, so my immediate impulse was to just reject the fundamental premise as uh, TLDW neither makes you more creative, but these two approaches do require you to engage with them in fundamentally different manners, both of which will bring out different aspects of your creativity and both yielding different types of results. DOOR or DAW stands for Digital Audio Workstation. This is your Ableton's, Fruity Loops, Studio One, Pro Tools, etc. Doorless refers to a setup of synthesizers, drum machines, and other hardware sequence or loop-based devices, which does not involve a DAW at the creation and performance level. Exactly where the line is drawn between these two types of setups can be somewhat arbitrary, as some people won't accept a setup as doorless unless all reverbs and delays come from pedals, with all levels being handled by an analog mixer which is recorded only as a stereo file with no digital post-processing whatsoever. Others, like myself, multi-track and record everything into a DAW to meticulously mix and master after the performance, adding in reverbs and delays and such, but without re-recording or overdubbing any elements after the fact. Creative limitations. The reason this question exists is that limitations fuel creativity. The human mind is a problem-solving beast. When presented with a problem, it has the ability to analyze it and assess it from many different angles to understand what's going on so it can break everything down and insert a solution. A blank page is a problem that's incomprehensibly large in scope. There are infinite things which could be added to that page. This can be frightening as humans struggle to cope with the concept of infinity. Our brain recognizes there's a vast amount of information to be dealt with and hasn't figured out how best to deal with it, since every possibility remains open and any path taken will close off other potential paths. Without a framework to guide choices, it can be hard to know which paths you do or don't want to take. This phenomena is called choice paralysis. The solution is actually very simple. Start imposing limits. This can be rephrased or reframed as start making choices. With a doorless setup, this problem doesn't exist as much as when using a door. This is because a doorless setup is inherently limited. Doors have a potentially infinite amount of tracks, which means on a fundamental level, you don't need to be too careful with how you use them. But with a doorless setup, each track is an actual piece of hardware, which can only do as much as that instrument can do, and you only have so many instruments, assuming you haven't succumbed too badly to gas. And if you'd like to watch a whole video about gas, I have one. So in a doorless setup, each part needs to pull its weight. It needs to contribute meaningfully. This implicit limitation quickly informs how you go about making decisions, and over time you learn how to think musically within that set of limitations. Working within such a set of limitations can actually be quite freeing, since you know you only have to get this limited set of elements tuned in correctly, rather than a potentially infinite sprawl of elements that you're presented with by a DAW. So in a plug and play sense, Doorless provides much more immediate creative material to work with, since it's defined by the limitations of your physical setup. Unless, of course, you have more money than sense. <laughs> in a lot of ways, decisions are being made for you by the setup, which is giving you something to creatively respond to. So why would I make the case that a door is equally as conducive to creativity? This turns into a question of setting your own limitations, and setting your own limitations becomes a question of intentionality and external ideas. Creating limitations, the true power of the door. Where a doorless setup provides you with limitations pre-installed, baked in, doors don't have that. Trying to interact with a door in the same way as a doorless setup can yield results, as once one begins making creative decisions, those decisions will begin blocking the paths of other potential decisions and will narrow down your decision tree. But this won't happen as quickly in a door, and without bringing an external idea with you to the door can be a very slow process to kickstart. And this is the fundamental problem of doors when viewed through this paradigm. The problem is that it's harder to get things started in a door. Kickstarting things is an important part of the creative process, and a doorless setup is more effective for this part of the process. But once enough of the idea is present to follow through on it, I'd make the case that a door is a much more fertile creative space in which to develop and grow the idea. 
Coming up with limitations can actually become a very exciting part of the creative process once you learn how to do it. One simple limitation that's worked very well for me is to limit the amount of tracks I'm working with to only the amount of synths I actually have, so that the final result can be played live directly with my synths without having to go through any tedious process of working out how to consolidate or reduce parts in order to make the track work within my live synth setup. Another limitation that's a lot of fun is to impose a narrative onto the music. This is basically just making a concept album, except within the context of an electronic synth music album, it's all being instrumental, so it's kind of like making a score slash soundtrack to a movie that doesn't exist. Maybe you want the music to describe a certain emotion or a vibe, or perhaps you want to see if you can compose in 7-8, or any other odd time signature because you may have recently discovered King Gizzard and the Lizard Wizard. And this is good, keep it up. You don't need just one limitation. You can have a whole set of limitations. You can even have those limitations change throughout a piece of music or swap out limitations for different pieces of music. In a way, this process kind of feels like metacognition, but for music composition. Hey, uh, this is Robert from The Edit. I realize that metacognition might not be the most broadly understood concept, so I'm going to take a moment to explain it. Google defines it as awareness and understanding of one's own thought process. Meta, meaning beyond, and cognition, being thinking. Uh, to put it simply, it's thinking about thinking. Metacognition is really important mode of like high level thinking. By becoming aware of how you think, by thinking about your own thinking, you gain a degree of intentionality over your own thought processes. Uh, we all do this unconsciously to a degree, but by becoming conscious of this, you can harness it more intentionally. Bringing this back to the main topic of this video, by becoming conscious of how limitations interact with your creativity and taking conscious control over the limitations you're working within, this is analogous to using metacognition within the creative process and is a powerful and important tool for guiding your own creativity. And using a door as my main compositional tool forced me to acquire this skill, to think about music in this way. With access to this level of composition, it becomes much harder to find oneself in a rut. If you're watching this and you're thinking, great, but which limitations do I choose? You've just presented more choices to be paralyzed about. Fear not. My response is to paraphrase Sanderson's Zero Law. When in doubt, always err on the side of what is most awesome. Sanderson's Zero Law is always err on the side of what is awesome. If you're making music, there's a good chance there's stuff about music you think is really cool. Allow your sense of what subjectively appeals to you and keeps you engaged to be your guiding light. Not to get too dark, but if you've lost that spark and nothing seems cool anymore and you're struggling to find that guiding light, then please, for the love of God, do yourself a favor and listen to King Gizzard and the Lizard Wizard. Butterfly 3000 has lots of cool synth parts on it, so does Not A Gun Infinity, Murder of the Universe, although those are much more leaning into the space rock kind of side of things. Sketches of Brunswick East is a fantastic jazz album. Also, their latest album, The Silver Chord, is super synth heavy and very fantastic, in my opinion. Also, Polygon Dwanaland is just just great. Uh, they released it straight into the public domain, hence why I'm able to play it in the background right now. If somehow King Gizzard doesn't cure your depression, uh, then try to think back to what you thought was cool in the past and explore ideas that your younger self would have thought was cool. Also therapy. It's also possible you're overworked and burnt out and might need to set aside some time to focus on recovering your creative energy. I don't know. Um, good luck. But putting that aside, without a clear guiding light or idea, just start making decisions almost at random and commit to them. Follow through on them and see where they end up. This won't necessarily have a high success rate to begin with, but over time, it'll give you the skills necessary to interact with this level of creative limitation setting in a more intentional and productive manner. Doorless kickstarts. Door refines. Considering this breakdown, it's hard to say that one's more conducive to creativity than the other, as they're both very conducive to different aspects of creativity, and ultimately can and perhaps should be used in tandem for different aspects of the creative process. With a door, the music appears almost like a flat object. It grants a perspective from which everything can be tuned all at once and in relation to every other element and I find it quite easy to string together a series of sections, developing, moving, changing, and growing it into a larger whole. The thing is, when booting up the door, I need to come to it with ideas, with potential limitations I can impose. 
with something external that can be interpreted musically. If I come to it with those elements correctly aligned, I found it can reliably be successful for, for myself and my style of composition. But this requires doing homework in advance, which is more effort. Rocking up unprepared becomes a complete gamble. Sometimes it pays off, but oftentimes it doesn't. But with a doorless setup, preparing too much can suck a lot of the fun out of things as the primary joy is of discovery and there's a much freer approach. Part of what's so beautiful about a doorless setup is the freeform experimentation. In being presented with such an immediate set of limits, one's creativity becomes limitless. That feels a bit hashtag deep. <laughs> This is fantastic, but can come at the expense of structure and the ability to develop larger, more complex interweaving pieces. I must admit that I only recently began exploring stuff like song mode, so perhaps I'm missing a big part of the doorless compositional picture. The most truly powerful move that I'm yet to make would be an approach that utilizes the best of both of these worlds, composing pieces as much as possible within the doorless setup then bringing them across into the door to finish working on them. This seems like the most obvious, inevitable conclusion to draw, as both of these setup shortcomings are accounted for by the other's strengths. One of the upcoming albums that I'm working on with my band Cyberspace Oblivion is utilizing this approach, as in we've composed a bunch of stuff doorless and we're going to bring it into the door. We haven't done that yet. I'm planning to do a video diary slash vlog type thing for the production of that album, like whenever we get around to putting it together. Um, but that might not be for a while as we have a lot scheduled with various other albums in the works, live shows, this channel, and plus we have, we have lives. The Elephant in the Room, The Cost of Doorless. Both of these methods can be highly effective, but in different ways as they deal with different aspects of the creative process. Ultimately though, for any musician who's newer to this space and questioning which direction to go in, it's no contest you should go with a door 100%. Doorless setups can be expensive and will take up a lot of space. For the early stages of learning music production and composition, it'll pay off far more to learn how to engineer your own limitations and learn to use a door effectively. A doorless setup can be a great addition if put together wisely, as it will provide alternate creative approaches, but in reality, a MIDI keyboard and a door is a much more useful starting place than a doorless setup. There are certain types of music which might lend themselves better to a doorless compositional approach, and if you intend to make that specific type of music, like Go, go nuts with doorless. But really, pretty much any type of music you could want to make can be made with a door, and doors can be supplemented over time with external hardware and other synths. If you have enough external synths and chuck a drum machine in the mix, you have a doorless setup. So it would make sense in most situations to go with a door, then build towards a doorless setup if you find a doorless to be a compelling avenue, which, like, I do. I have a doorless setup for a reason. And it's fun for doing like little YouTube jams. Like you can't do YouTube jams on a door. I mean, you could, but I'd hate it. <laughs> to conclude, hopefully I've been able to bring a useful perspective to this conversation. Let me know your thoughts in the comments, whether you agree, disagree, or think I may have missed or overlooked something important in this video. I'd also be very curious to hear how you personally go about creating music. Do you use a door or do you go doorless or mixture of both? Like how, how do you, if you have a strong preference, I'd love to learn why and what informed your perspective. As well, does your experience with doors and doorless setups differ from what I've described? Everything I put forward in this video is derived from my personal experience and interaction with both types of setup. And I'm curious to hear from you and gain as many perspectives on all of this as I can. One thing I ask is that we keep things civil and respectful in the comments. Okay, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this and want to support what I'm doing here, hitting like and subscribe goes a long way towards helping this channel. I have a Patreon where I post vlogs and exclusive Patreon content. To go along with this video, I've released a video on Patreon going in depth on my creative process for both door and doorless workflows. Uh, so if you're interested in that and other exclusive content that will be there in the future, please sign up. It really helps out the channel. And if you're interested to hear my doorless jams, please go check out my band Cyberspace Oblivion's YouTube channel. We have we also have an album out currently called Rogue Planet uh, that was constructed entirely within a door. Okay, bye.